Hello YouTube, my name is David Larson. Today I'll be showing you the basics of the subharmonic register singing technique. Now this register encompasses notes from the octavus range, really, anywhere from around F sharp 2 to um, F sharp 1 and down to C sharp 1. And it, it goes very low, um, depending on how your voice is and how long you train with it. So I will be showing you the very beginning steps of it today, but first, this one is for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about and you just stumbled across this video and you want to hear an example. So I'll give you an example real quick. The last two notes of this short little phrase are going to be in the subharmonic register. Uh, this is D and A. So. Okay. So that may or may not have been my cleanest one ever, but I have another example on my channel. Um, it's the Volga Boatman or something like that, the end of that. And uh, there are many other examples out there. Kay Barber is very good at this technique. Um, Cody Jeter uses it. And Tao Yang is another really good um, user of this technique. So they have some great examples on YouTube, so go check them out as well. Um, this video, though, is going to be in a series of videos talking about some extra bass techniques that I will be doing on um, the next few weeks. Uh, but this one is for the very beginning steps of the subharmonic register technique. Um, first of all, I want to talk about real quick what is actually going on in your throat while this is happening. How is this, how is this sound coming out, um, this octavist sound? Well, you have two sets of vocal cords in your throat. You have your regular vocal cords, which I'm using right now to speak ha, and to sing, regular things like that, regular phonation. Then you have your false cords, which are used for vocal fry and things like that. And some people use those very effectively. Tim Storms, Tim Faust, they use them effectively and sound decent, and I call that singing. But that is a different story, and we'll talk about that some other time. Um, anyways, so you have these two sets of vocal cords your regular chords and your false chords, which are above your regular vocal chords. So there is a technique out there that is a bit more common, uh, commonly heard of than subharmonic singing, and it is called um, throat singing. <clears throat> Ugly tones, it's kind of tough on your throat in the beginning stages. That utilizes both sets of vocal cords, and people realize studying this technique that your false chords, when they are controlled properly, they vibrate with a resonant frequency exactly one octave below pitch rise, uh, what your regular vocal cords are vibrating at, which is really strange. I mean, the, the physics are there and everything as to physically why they are. Um, it just deals with mass and structure that your false chords are made out of, but why? It's such a it's such a strange thing as to why they vibrate an octave lower than your regular chords, but kind of a mystery of the uh, human voice. Anyways, that technique utilizes both vocal cords. Why did I bring it up? Because some people get the common misconception that throat singing is subharmonic singing, and it is definitely not. It is similar in the fact that you're using both sets of vocal cords to create a sound, but it is different in the way that you activate the sound in the vocal cords. So kagira, or throat singing, you activate the sound using a glottal push or a glottal attack, whatever you want to call it, a glottal. And that is the, um, huh, uh, the it's a very um, abrasive sound that's, one common use for it is uh, African or tribal music that you sing in honor choirs or whatever. Ho, 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 that push at the beginning of the phrase or word is a glottal push. Now the Kargitar method kind of abuses this glottal push and sustains sound using the push through the entire thing. So it takes quite a bit of muscle to do and people that practice it incorrectly hurt their voices badly. So this is not throat singing. This technique utilizes the same sets of vocal cords, although you're activating those vocal cords 
with steady airflow, regular airflow like you would normally speaking or normally singing. So how do you get into this register? Well, Cody Jeter, uh, one of his videos, definitely go try to find it, I can't remember what it's called, but he talks about the song The Joker by Kenny Rogers, and the very first uh, word Kenny Rogers comes in on, he accidentally is in the subharmonic register for a moment, a very brief moment, just a word. And it's something like, uh, like that. He just starts in the subharmonic register and register and slips into his normal um, chest voice. So that is really how I started getting the feeling for this um, register. And it's really all about feeling once you get it down. Um, so what I'm going to do now is try to take myself back about six months to when I first started so I can be something relatable for you guys that are just starting out. Um, I don't want to sound perfect here, I want to sound like I did when I started six months ago. So this is how I started and this is how I would suggest to start because it worked very well for me. It may not for you, but I hope it does. So here we go. If your speaking voice is roughly around mine or if your bottom usable chest voice note is around an E flat or an E, then try to aim for the B flat, B flat one, B flat two to B flat one. Your, your first note, your wheelhouse note or whatever you want to call it for this register will be a B flat one, uh, which is pretty exciting. That sounds pretty cool, right? You've probably never sung one of those before or hardly. So we're going we're gonna to aim for a B flat one. If you have a bit higher uh, low end, maybe an F or so, it's probably going to be around a C. And some of my friends, David Kahn is one of them, he has quite a bit lower voice than I do, and his is actually an F sharp, I think. So, um, so yeah, we'll go from there, uh, pick whichever one suits you best. So I'm gonna go with mine, uh, B flat. And what you're going to do is take the pitch one octave above that. So that'd be B flat two, right here. Okay, so you got that note. Now what you're going to do while sustaining that note is let your voice relax to a point where it almost slips back into vocal fry. And you're going to have to practice this a few times to get the feeling down. But I'll try to imitate the sound that you should get right now, what I started with. So this is what you'll this is what you should experience when you get it when you get it going right. That is the very beginning of the subharmonic technique. Um, you'll get a lot of pops and it won't be very controllable, but you'll hear this tone underneath that sounds like it could be this. And it is, that is, you're doing well. It sounds terrible, but you're doing well. Just keep going. Um, so you've got that. Uh, and what I would suggest from there is not much more than a half an hour a day for the first week or so. Practice just trying to get that note and sustain it until you can get it to a point of you know with a few less pops but you you actually get that tone on the bottom now it's kind of exciting then you're like oh i can actually hear this <laughs> hear this tone underneath that's sitting at a b flat one but you still have a few pops and cracks and lack of control and you'll go flat and all of that will happen as you're practicing this, but it will get a lot better um, if you practice it. Uh, just practice wisely, don't practice too much. If you practice too much, you will lose your voice. One of my friends just about lost his voice for a little while while trying to do this too much. Um, so don't practice too much. But um, yeah, so try to get one note down. And from there, hopefully by the time you get one note solid, I will have made another couple of videos explaining the next steps of this. So there you go for now. Um, I will leave you with that. Uh, if you want to find me on Facebook or Instagram, I am putting those tags um, in the description box if you want to actually contact me or ask me more questions about this or just leave a comment below. Um, also, if you want to see more examples of this, uh, like I said, I have one other video on right now, the Volga, Volga Boatmen just the ending of that. I think it's just a B to a G or something like that. Um, K Barber, find his channel. He is very good at this technique. Cody Jeter is very good at this technique. And Tao Yang. 
those are the three main ones that I know about on YouTube. If there are any others, somebody please let me know. Um, also, I will be making uh, more videos in the future, not just about subharmonic singing, the subharmonic register, but also about some other extra bass techniques that some people will talk about, some people I have not seen any information about at all. So I would like to share those with you guys um, as well. So that will be in the future too. I'm excited for those. So any comments or suggestions, just leave them below and I'll try to get back to you soon. So thank you guys. Take care.